Hi, my name is Samantha Montalegre and welcome to the Maternity Mentor. This is the final video of our three-part series on sexually transmitted diseases and how they can affect your pregnancy and your baby. This is part three of three. Thanks for joining us. Today is part three of three discussing sexually transmitted diseases during pregnancy. For anyone who doesn't know me, I have been a registered nurse for 11 years. I have spent my entire career working in the maternal newborn nursing area, including mother-baby postpartum, NICU, antepartum, and labor and delivery. I have practiced as an IBCLC for eight years and have been maternal newborn nursing certified for seven years. I have received specialized training in perinatal mood and anxiety disorders, as well as perinatal bereavement. This video will examine different sexually transmitted diseases, their signs and symptoms, treatments, and how it can affect your pregnancy and baby. Sexually transmitted diseases or infections are also known as STDs or STIs and are a taboo subject in our society. It's important for women to realize that they are not alone and that talking about this is not shameful or wrong. A lot of women are embarrassed to speak with their partners or their physicians about STDs. However, it's extremely important to do so as they can cause long-term problems for mothers and birth defects for babies. This video is not intended as medical advice and viewers are advised to consult their physician if they have any symptoms, concerns, or questions. Let's start with herpes simplex virus. Herpes is the shortened name for herpes simplex virus or HSV. It's one of the most common STDs. There are two main strains of the virus, HSV1 and HSV2. Both can be transmitted sexually. HSV-1 primarily causes oral herpes, which is responsible for cold sores. HSV-1 can also be passed from one person's mouth to another person's genitals during oral sex. When this happens, HSV-1 can cause genital herpes. HSV-2 primarily causes genital herpes. HSV-2 can be found in infected people's bodily fluids, including saliva, semen, and vaginal secretions. The most common symptom of herpes is blistery sores. In the case of genital herpes, these sores develop on or around the genitals. In oral herpes, they develop on or around the mouth. The first outbreak is usually the most painful. The infected site often starts to itch or tingle before the actual appearance of blisters. The blisters may become open sores or ulcerated and ooze fluid. A crust may appear over the sores within a week of the outbreak and heal within a few weeks. General symptoms for both males and females include blisters that may appear in your mouth and on your lips, face, and anywhere else that came into contact with infected areas, swollen lymph nodes, and headaches, body aches, and fever. General symptoms for females include blisters around or near the vagina, anus, and buttocks. Outbreaks typically become less painful and frequent over time. Genital herpes can cause pregnancy complications like miscarriage and premature birth. It's very important that you tell your doctor that you have genital herpes if you're pregnant. Your doctor will discuss what to expect before, during, and after you deliver your baby. They will take precautions to prevent the virus from being transmitted to your baby during delivery. They can prescribe pregnancy safe treatments to ensure a healthy delivery. Genital herpes can spread to your baby if you have an active outbreak during a vaginal delivery. Prevention of transmission to your baby would be a delivery via cesarean section rather than a routine vaginal birth. When a pregnant woman passes the infection to her fetus in the womb or to her newborn infant, it is called congenital herpes. Congenital herpes can be very dangerous to newborns. 
General symptoms for a baby born with herpes received through a vaginal delivery may include ulcers on the face, body, or genitals. Babies who are born with genital herpes can develop very severe complications, including blindness, brain damage, and even death. There's no cure for herpes yet. Effective treatment and safe sexual practices can help you lead a comfortable life with herpes and protect others from the virus. Antiviral drugs may help speed up the healing time of your sores, control your outbreaks, and alleviate the pain of an outbreak. They can also help lower your chances of passing herpes to your sexual partner. Medications may be taken at the first sign of an outbreak, like tingling or itching, to reduce the symptoms of that outbreak. People who get outbreaks may also be prescribed medicines to make it less likely that they will get outbreaks in the future. Outbreaks can happen when you become stressed, sick, or tired. So try to avoid this by getting plenty of sleep, eating a nutritious diet, exercising, and practicing mind-body techniques to reduce stress. Use condoms every time you have sex with someone. This will help prevent genital herpes and other STDs from spreading. Home care can include using mild cleansers when bathing or showering in warm water, keeping the site clean and dry, and wearing loose cotton clothing to keep the area comfortable. Next, we're gonna talk about pubic lice or crabs. Pubic lice or crabs are tiny insects that take up residence on your pubic hair. Like head lice and body lice, they feed on human blood. Pubic lice are typically transmitted through intimate contact, including sexual intercourse. It's also possible to catch pubic lice by using the blankets, towels, sheets, or clothing of people who have pubic lice. People with pubic lice often experience itching in their genital or anus about five days after the initial infestation, and at night the itching will become more intense. Other common symptoms of a pubic lice infection include low-grade fever, irritability, lack of energy, pale bluish spots near the bites, excessive itching that may cause wounds or an infection in the affected areas, and small pink or red bumps around the genitals or anus. You might also be able to see the lice or their tiny white eggs around the roots of your pubic hair. Treatment for pubic lice consists of decontaminating yourself, your clothes, and your bedding. Topical over-the-counter lotions and shampoos can be used to remove pubic lice from your body. You may only need to wash your pubic hair once if your lice infestation is mild. Even after successful treatment, a few stubborn lice eggs may cling to your hairs. Remove leftover nits with tweezers. Vacuum the entire house and clean your bathroom with a bleach solution. Wash all towels, bedding, and clothing in hot water and machine dry them using the highest setting. If you can't wash or dry clean a certain item of clothing, seal it in an airtight plastic sack for 72 hours. Pubic lice poses no problems for your pregnancy. However, women who are pregnant or breastfeeding need to consult their doctor before using any treatment products, including over-the-counter remedies. The doctor will advise which products are safe to use. Prevent a pubic lice infestation by avoiding sharing clothes, bedding, or towels with anyone who has pubic lice, and avoid sexual contact until treatment is complete and successful. Once you've been diagnosed with pubic lice, you must inform all current and past sexual partners so they can be treated as well. Finally, we're going to talk about bacterial vaginosis or BV. Bacterial vaginosis or BV is an infection of the vagina that happens when there's a change in the normal balance of bacteria there. BV usually doesn't cause any other health problems. You can get BV from sexual contact, including oral and anal sex. About half of the time, women with BV have no symptoms. If women do have symptoms, they can include thin, white, gray, or green discharge, fishy smell that gets stronger after sex, burning feeling when you pee, or itching. Any woman can get BV, but your risks are higher if you smoke, are sexually active, 
if you douche because douching upsets the natural balance of vaginal bacteria or if you use scented soaps, bubble baths, and vaginal deodorants. Additionally, your risks are higher if you have a new sexual partner or are having sex with more than one partner. Also, women who have female partners seem to be more at risk, but the reasons remain unclear. IUDs, which are a birth control device inside the uterus, have also been linked to BV, especially if you have irregular bleeding. However, the reasons remain unclear for this as well. Your doctor can prescribe antibiotics to treat BV. Finish all the medication even if your symptoms go away. If the medication is stopped early, the infection could come back. Since BV can spread through sexual contact, don't have sex until you're done taking your medication and your symptoms are gone. If your partner is a woman, she may want to see her doctor to learn whether she needs treatment. Even after BV is treated and goes away, it often returns. If this happens, you'll probably need to take antibiotics again for a longer time. If you use an IUD and BV keeps coming back, you may want to talk to your doctor about a different type of birth control. To lower your chances of getting BV, make sure you clean sex toys after every use. Don't douche. Get tested for sexually transmitted diseases and make sure your partner gets tested as well. Limit your number of sex partners. If your partner is male, put a condom on his penis before it touches your vagina, mouth, or anus. Use only water and soap to wash your genitals and wipe from front to back after you use the bathroom. Bacterial vaginosis has been tied to other health problems including a bacterial infection after having a hysterectomy or other surgery on female organs while you have BV, sexually transmitted diseases like herpes, chlamydia, gonorrhea, or HIV. BV can lead to issues, especially when you're pregnant or trying to get pregnant, including a premature or low birth weight baby if you're pregnant, less success with fertility treatments like in vitro fertilization or IVF, and pelvic inflammatory disease, which is an infection of your uterus, fallopian tubes, and ovaries. We hope this information helped you understand more about sexually transmitted diseases and empowered you to be comfortable talking with your partner and your physician about them. Remember, this video is not intended as medical advice, and viewers are advised to consult their physician if they have any symptoms, concerns, or questions. We will link resources down below for more information. Please share your comments and let us know what topics you would like to hear more about. If you like this content, please remember to hit that like button and subscribe so you can be the first to receive this information. Remember to share this channel with your friends and family and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for additional content. We will link those in the description below. Thank you so much for joining us at The Maternity Mentor.